There are like 44 monarchies around the world and a royal wedding is always kind of a spectacle. And it makes sense because it's one of the main reasons for the existence of the monarchy, to produce an heir. And in most of cases, you need to be married to get one. But what does it mean in the 21st century? What if a king wanted to marry a man and a queen marry a woman? Let's talk about it. Hello Internet, welcome to Lex Universe. In this video, I want to expand on my geographical videos and educational fun fact videos around the world because a few days ago I couldn't sleep and when it was 2 in the morning I was just like laying in my bed watching the ceiling and suddenly got an idea. What would happen if a king were gay? And I tried to search for it and it was actually quite interesting, so I decided I will share it with you. Because whenever I start thinking about something, I just need to get it out of my head. Otherwise, I know I will spend a lot of sleepless nights in my bed. But before we dive in, uh, let me welcome all of my new subscribers. If you haven't and you like my content or you just want to make me happy, subscribe to my channel. It's very easy, it will not cost you anything in it, I will be so happy. But now, let's talk about the Game Monarchs. Before we begin, maybe important to talk about what a monarchy is, how many monarchies there are in the world, what are the differences, and I mean, considering the topic we have, what are the probabilities? So, a monarchy is a type of a government where the head of state is not elected, unless it's an elected monarchy, in which case, I mean, what's the difference between monarchy and republic anyway? I could never find this answer. If you would like me to make a video about that, just write it in the comments. But for the purposes of this video, let's consider that a monarchy is a type of state where it's headed by a monarch, which in most cases is some kind of a king, queen, prince, Duke, Grand Duke, Sultan, and so on. They may be elected. I mean, if you are interested in any elected monarchy, I can send you to the Vatican City, where the Pope actually is the monarch of Vatican, and he is elected. But in most cases, monarchy is hereditary. There are several forms of hereditary systems. The most important ones are the primogenitor, which means that the eldest child, or in many cases, when it's male preference, the eldest son becomes the monarch after the death of their father. Or we have the seniority, which means that the eldest person in the larger or closer royal house will become the king after their predecessor dies. This is, for example, the case of the Saudi Arabia, where many of the recent kings were actually brothers or sons of the founder of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Only now, many monarchs later, we are getting to the next generation of the overrules. The primogenitor is actually one of the most widespread types of monarchies around the world, uh, especially due to the fact that almost the majority of all the monarchies around the world are the Commonwealth realms, which have all the same succession systems as the United Kingdom. Uh, which you know, makes sense because since the Queen of uh, the United Kingdom is actually the Queen in many other Commonwealth realms, if the succession system would be different, well that would mean that somebody else would probably succeed her. Well, not in this case because Charles is a son and he would be, well, in the air anyway. Now, these systems are not set in stone. This will be important later in this video, but uh, let's talk, for example, about the United Kingdom. Actually, a lot I will be saying in this video will be mostly focused on the European monarchies. I will tell you why a little bit later. But let's talk about the United Kingdom. For quite some long time, the succession system in the monarchy was the male preference primogenitor, which means that if the king had a son, he would succeed him as the next ruler. If he didn't have a son, then the daughter could become the next monarch. And we could see it in the past, 
and uh, examples of the Queen Victoria, Queen Elizabeth, or the current monarch, Queen Elizabeth II. Because they didn't have any brothers, then they could become the sovereign. In 2015, this changed when the succession system in the United Kingdom and all the Commonwealth realms was changed to the equal primogenitor, which means that all children of the monarch are considered equal and the eldest child, no matter their sex or gender, are the next in line for the succession. Which means, right now, it is the Prince of Wales who is the next in line, but if he had an older sister, and she would be very old, but she would become the next queen, considering they would be still alive when the queen is dead. Now that we have described what the monarchies are, let's talk a little bit what the history of gay rights or LGBTQ plus rights are in these countries. Now we have to divide it into several categories. First of all, we have the Middle East and other nations where homosexuality is actually illegal. So in case the king were gay, then I guess they would hide it and we would never know it. Uh, because like they wouldn't want to be stoned to death, of course. But we will leave these monarchies behind, because I think that's quite obvious what would happen there. Let's talk about the monarchies, but actually, gay marriage is a thing. And for that, we will have to probably stick in Europe. In 2001, the equal marriage for same-sex couples has been established in the Netherlands, as the first country in the world. This has slowly been extended to other territories and countries, uh, like, for example, in the United Kingdom, it was the year 2013. And uh, even many Protestant churches, including the Anglican Church, do accept gay marriages. So, now, that's one thing. So, if you are a gay person in the United K Kingdom, you can marry a spouse, and it's an equal marriage like any other heterosexual marriage. Well, when it comes to aristocracy, this is a little bit different. And that's basically what I will want to discuss in this video. As of right now, we don't have any gay monarchs around the world. But I will give you some examples from history. Now, disclaimer here. Uh, I have found many articles about many monarchs from the history when some, where someone claimed they were gay. Usually, the reason is they never had children, they never had a wife. I excluded all of these people from my list because uh, I didn't find any other sources. And I mean, you can claim it about anyone. But there are several monarchs in history where it's almost certain that they were actually gay. Although, I mean, nobody would say it in that time because the term didn't exist. But uh, there were several monarchs in the history where almost everybody comes to the consensus that they actually did have homosexual sexuality. Well, let's start in ancient Rome. And there we can start with the Emperor Hadrian, which is one of the most famous Roman rulers. We all know the Hadrian Wall in uh, the United Kingdom. And reportedly, he had a very close relationship with one of his, one of his close friends, Antinous, and many people claimed at the time that they had more than just friendly relationship. Many sources point to that. Uh, one of the most interesting ones is that when this person, Adrinos, died or he drowned in the Nile, uh, Hadrian was reportedly really sad and really in, the, in despair. He almost defied him and he actually built the city of Adrianopolis in Egypt in his name to honor him. Let's go to the United Kingdom or more specifically to England. I have two examples of kings that almost certainly were gay. First of all was the Edward II and then James I. During the rule of James I, there was actually like this epigram that said Elizabeth was the king and now James is the queen. So I guess that says it all, doesn't it? And then we have the Queen Christina of Sweden. What's interesting about her, she... There are even some questions whether she was actually a woman. 
she was uh, always wearing men's clothes and, well, apparently, whenever you looked at her, you could barely see whether she was a woman or not. Because she always was dressed like a man, ever since her childhood till the end of her reign. Then we can look at Louis XIII of France, which is very famous from The Three Musketeers from Alexandre Dumas. He was also said to have many male lovers, and since it has many sources, I guess that could be true. Probably the most glamorous example of this would be the king Frederick II of Prussia, who was reported to be homosexual even during his lifetime. The author T.C.W. Blanning, in his book Frederick the Great, The King of Prussia, makes an assumption or has a theory that he actually wasn't gay, that he actually had some abnormality on his uh, reproductive organs and he was impotent and he couldn't have sex with women and because he was ashamed of that, he actually spread the rumors about him being gay. I guess that was cool in, this, in the 18th century, why not? Uh, so there were, those were some examples from history, but when you look at these people, uh, a few things will come to your mind. These people never came out, at least not publicly. And of course they didn't. They lived in the times where this was not considered socially acceptable, to say the least. In most cases they had a wife, except for Frederick and some others. Uh, many of them produced an heir, some haven't and the rule then came to their nephews and so on, but none of them had to deal with the possibility to marry their lovers, even though they had them. But we live in a changed world. I mean, gay marriage is kind of normal in majority of at least Western Europe and the United States and so on, and if this is possible for the normal people, why shouldn't it be possible for the king? And now let's ask the question, is it possible for the king or for the monarch? Like I said, we don't have many examples, but when you dig kind of deep, you will find a few very vague expressions about, about this topic. Like for example, in uh, the year 2018, there was this book produced in the Netherlands, Amalia Duty Calls. It was a book that was about the, the heir of the crown of the Netherlands, Princess Amalia, uh, who was just coming to age. And while this wasn't the main topic of the book, the author has also discussed the marital potential for the princess. And one of the things is that if you want to become uh, a monarch in the Netherlands, uh, you are not completely free to choose a spouse. Well to this, the Prime Minister of the Netherlands, Mark Rutte, has said during the session of the Parliament when it came to this topic, that the princess has a right to marry whoever want, even the woman, and she wouldn't lose the title, and she wouldn't lose the throne. Which is one of the very few examples of someone actually saying, yeah, you can be LGBTQ+, and you can still become the king, or a queen, or whatever the name would be for the, I don't know, non-binary monarch. Again, hashtag queen. But that's not actually the only example that I could find. Well, we don't have any married royal gay couples, but probably the closest thing that we have is Lord Ivor Mountbatten. This is, uh, and I actually now have to read it because I don't remember it, it's the third cousin one removed of the Queen Elizabeth II and first cousin once removed of the Duke of Edinburgh. What a family, right? This person came out in 2016 when he uh, disclosed to the world that he is living in a gay relationship with his partner and they actually got married in 2018. While it wasn't the most spectacular royal wedding in the United Kingdom, it was definitely one that really made kind of a change. It was the first gay marriage in the British royal family and as far as I could find the only gay marriage in any royal family around the world. So this should serve as a precedent. How does this actually work? 
like Lord Mountbatten is not the heir to the throne, so he will not become the king. But we can talk about their marriage because uh, Lord Mountbatten, as I have mentioned, he or actually has um, an aristocratic title. So was it transferred to his spouse? Was it? Well, if you are a count and you marry a woman, then she then becomes the countess. We can see it in case of the Prince of Wales, where when he married uh, Diana or Camilla, then they received all the titles that he has. I mean, Prince of Wales, Princess of Wales, Duke of Cornwall, Duke Duchess of Cornwall, and so on. Um, but in this case, it didn't happen. So in case you are married in the same sex couple in the United Kingdom, then you have pretty much the same rights as, as the normal heterosexual married couple, but in case you are the member of aristocracy, the aristocratic succession roles do not transfer. And also, it sort of makes sense in a way that uh, you cannot produce any heir from this from this marriage, so you don't really have to worry with the question whether your children will be able to inherit your title or not. Right now, the spouse of the king, if it's a same-sex marriage, or an expansion of any holder of any aristocratic title does not inherit them. And the same would go for the children. If there, in case there is a gay couple adoption legal in the country, would their child have the right for the throne? Well, in this case, I would have to say probably not. Because when we look at the United Kingdom, the blood is everything when it comes to the royals. In case the royal couple does adopt anyone, they can give them any title they want, but they do not inherit the right to the throne. Which is one of the reasons why it shows how really outdated the whole system and the whole concept of the monarchy is. And we could ask ourselves the question whether it actually has a place in the modern world. I don't have an answer to that, just something to think about. If you have any opinion to that, please leave it in the, down, in the comments down below. But let's say that all of the monarchies in the world will not get abolished in the coming 5 or 10 years. We'll have to deal with the fact that in case there will be a member of the royal family. And like you could see, there were quite a lot of gay members of the royal houses in the past. In the society that we have right now, they will probably not want to live in a life for their entire life. And they will want to marry someone they want. So, how will, how will it be dealt with? So We may ask ourselves the question, is it even possible? In case the monarch of the United Kingdom wanted to marry someone of the same sex, it may be possible in many countries of the Western world, let's say. In Canada, the United Kingdom, in Australia, they wouldn't it didn't necessarily have to have a problem with it. But let's consider that the King of the United Kingdom is also the head of the Church of England, and many countries, especially in the Africa or in the Caribbean, may have a problem with the gay king, especially if he was married to their partner. So, first of all, I don't think we are there yet, but I think it's coming. So let's theorize what the rules may be in the future. Let's say you are a king, and you want to marry a man, what would be his title? Well, we can consider that probably the style would be His Majesty, like it is today. Well, we may have an example from the present days, actually. Somehow, somehow the rank of a king feels, in our minds, higher than the rank of the queen, even if it's the queen regnant. So, if the man becomes a king, their wife is queen. But if the queen becomes the queen, usually it's very rare that her husband would be a king. I mean, for me, why couldn't he be king concert? I don't see the problem there. But it is the mindset of almost everyone that the male royal or aristocratic titles are somehow, somehow higher. Like, I'm not surprised. We have had the male preference primogeniture in 
almost every country that has ever had a monarch in Europe and almost everywhere. So I guess it kind of makes sense that we have this mindset. But what happens when the queen gets a husband? Who well, becomes a prince? So I can imagine that if a king got a husband, he would probably be called the prince consort. And I can imagine that if a well, woman queen could get a wife, then either she could be queen consort and we could have two queens, that would be pretty cool. Or she would be just called princess consort. And that kind of settles it. Also, another possibility is if, let's say, the Prince of Wales got a husband, they could get only some of the lesser titles that the prince actually holds. So, not to have Prince of Wales and the Prince Consort of Wales, we could have the Prince of Wales and his husband, the Duke of Cornwall. Oh, that doesn't make any sense. So, I believe in most cases it would be enough to get the titles of the title consort to the spouses when it's settled. No big deal. Well, that's about that. What are your opinions? I mean, I don't need to know your opinions about the gay marriage in general, but if that were to happen, what would be the titles of the spouses of the members of the royal house or the aristocratic houses? Uh, what would happen if anyone in any royal house in uh, the world came out? How would the society react? And in case you were gay and you were a member of the royal family, would you do that? Or would you just marry whoever they told you to? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, it's something that I never planned on filming, but uh, I found it so interesting that I just had to make a video about it. So if you find it interesting as well, uh, give me a like, subscribe to my channel, that would really help me a great deal. Check out my other social media, Instagram, Facebook, and I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful time.